We have some breaking news tonight at 10. We are following two major stories, both at home and abroad. In the last 45 minutes, the Columbia City Council rejected a proposed parking structure for a downtown hotel. And we're also following developments out of Afghanistan tonight after the Taliban successfully took control of the country. We'll have more on the U.S.'s response to the crisis in just a minute. But first, let's get to the latest from City Hall tonight. The council voted unanimously to reject the prospective Cherry Street Hotel parking plan. ABC 17's Zach Boetto is live after sitting in on that meeting. And Zach, this means a lot of Colombians who have parking permits will not lose their spots. Yeah, Deb, the developers wanted 99 spots in the 10th and Cherry Street parking garage, and City Council was just not about it. They actually approved the plat for the hotel, but decided the parking wasn't worth it for the city. And from what the developer had previously said, it doesn't look like a hotel is going to go up at Hit and Cherry anytime soon, if ever. Now, again, all seven members voted a unanimous no on this parking plan. Take a listen here at Sounded. Council Bill 20921, Mr. Thomas? No. Mr. Pitzer? No. Ms. Peters? No. Ms. Patrice? No. Ms. Fowler? No. Ms. Wainer? No. Ms. Fowler? No. Moving on to Bill 258. And Deb, you can hear some claps in there. It's pretty busy inside of council chambers because it is also the first public hearing for the fiscal year 2022 budget for the city. And they're discussing the park, park tax right now. So far, a lot of comment coming from Colombians asking to get some of that American Rescue, fan, American Rescue Plan funding. And the city will receive just over $25 million from that American Rescue Plan. $10 million is going to broadband, $3 million for the new mental health treatment center, $3 million for shelter for the homeless, $3 million for stormwater projects, $2 million on the mayor's task force on community violence recommendations, and about $1.5 million for workforce development initiatives. Now, like I said, right now, they are still meeting they're talking about the park sales tax what parks should get this upcoming year and I've also reached out to the spokesperson for the developer of that Cherry Street Hotel he I've yet to hear back from him but as soon as we find out what they're doing with that plot of land of course we'll keep you updated on air and online at ABC 17 news.com reporting live from downtown Columbia Zach Boetto ABC 17 news Zach thank you turning now to weather mid Missouri is in for a few more days of sunny skies tracking the clear forecast for us tonight is storm track chief meteorologist Jessica Hafner and Jess rain is expected to hold off until later this week yeah, I'm not expecting too much. Next couple days, if we do see anything, it's going to be pretty hit and miss, kind of like those afternoon pop of thunderstorms that we see in the summertime. So it's looking like a very typical week around here as I'm expecting temperatures to be right around average and that rain chance will be tied to the heat of the day. So anything that pops up will start to diminish by sunset each night. I am expecting a better chance for more widespread by rain by the end of the week and that to cool things down briefly before the heat returns by the end of the weekend. Right now it is beautiful about 70 degrees in Moberly, Columbia right now down to 71. We're in the upper 60s at the Lake of the Ozarks and Jefferson City under clear skies. We have 74 degrees. Winds are very calm, but eventually shifting to the south tomorrow and starting that warming trend. So we're starting out in the mid 60s for tomorrow morning in the afternoon. We'll be climbing back up into the mid to upper 80s. So it is a bit warmer, but the humidity is still in check for at least one more day in the mid 60s. However, that number starts to creep up. That dew point temperature getting back into the 70s by Thursday, and that's when we really start to feel more of that humidity. Rain chances start to pick up each day, but really become more widespread by Friday, possibly hanging on to a little bit of that rainfall on Saturday. I'll show you the extended future track coming up in a few minutes. We have some more breaking news tonight. U.S. experts are expected to recommend COVID-19 booster shots for all Americans eight months after their second shot. The Associated Press broke the news in the last five minutes. Sources there say the recommendation will be for all Americans regardless of age. A formal announcement is expected sometime later this week. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. 
President Joe Biden says he stands squarely behind his decision to withdraw U.S. forces from Afghanistan. The president was quick to add, though, that the fall of the country's government was much quicker than expected. During remarks this afternoon, President Biden said he was faced with a choice between sticking to a previously negotiated agreement to withdraw troops from the region this year or sending thousands more service members back into Afghanistan for what he called a third decade of war, adding he would rather take criticism for the move than pass the decision to a fifth president. I'm now the fourth American president to preside over war in Afghanistan, two Democrats and two Republicans. I will not pass this responsibly on, responsibility on to a fifth president. I will not mislead the American people by claiming that just a little more time in Afghanistan will make all the difference. The president also spoke on some graphic images coming out of Afghanistan, calling them, quote, gut-wrenching, particularly speaking on this video taken earlier today from the airport in Kabul. That's where Afghans were hoping to escape the country. They are seen clinging to the side of a U.S. military plane just seconds before takeoff. Seven people were killed in that chaos, but the president did not admit any fault in how the drawdown was executed. Our mission in Afghanistan was never supposed to have been nation building. It was never supposed to be creating a unified, centralized democracy. Our only vital national interest in Afghanistan remains today what it has always been, preventing a terrorist attack on America's homeland. Tonight, we are hearing firsthand what it was like on the ground in Kabul as thousands of Afghans rushed onto the airport tarmat. Al Jazeera senior producer and former KMIZ employee Charlotte Bellis spoke with ABC 17 News one-on-one -on -one today about what she saw. Take a listen. We learned earlier this morning that all commercial flights were going to be stopped because of just chaos at the airport, thousands of people flooding in and just overwhelming security and making their way onto the tarmac. Later in the day, we understood that no military flights were able to take off any longer either because there were so many people on the tarmac and US forces, of which we understand there are about 6,000, uh, were unable to secure the airport and to the extent that uh, two Taliban members who were trying to do crowd control on the exterior of the airport were shot by US forces. Uh, the Taliban were trying to disperse crowds by shooting into the air so there was a lot of panic and at the end of the day the, there was really little movement uh, in terms of any evacuations because of just the number of people on the tarmac. There were some horrific videos that came out showing Afghan civilians chasing C-17 planes, American planes, down the runway and clinging on to the wheels so that when the plane took off and there was actually videos showing people falling from the, the plane. So just a really horrific situation there and very little security and uh, coordination and just general anarchy uh, which has led to thousands of Americans and other foreigners being stuck at the airport unable to be evacuated because the planes cannot take off without risking the lives of, of Afghan civilians. Charlotte also said today the Taliban is on every street corner manning checkpoints. They've taken over ministries and hotels, including the one that she's actually staying at, saying they were walking past her with machine guns saying good morning. Charlotte also added the Taliban is encouraging people there to go about their lives as normal, like nothing ever happened. And we are also closely following some local reaction on the crisis tonight. During the president's address this afternoon, Governor Mike Parson tweeted out saying he was concerned about the rapidly deteriorating situation and accused the Biden administration of gross negligence. Missouri Senator Roy Blunt called the chaos an unforced error, adding he feels the withdrawal will prove to be a major mistake for the Biden presidency. Junior Senator Josh Hawley also tweeted out today, accusing the White House of not adequately preparing for the withdrawal. Of course, this is an ongoing and developing situation. And for more on this crisis, you can always visit our website at abc17news.com. Just ahead on ABC 17 News at 10, where the news comes first. We're also following some more breaking news tonight out of Boonville, where crews are on scene of a large structure fire. We'll tell you what we know next.
Plus, JC schools will require masks when social distancing isn't possible. We'll have more details on how local leaders feel and what you need to know. And I'm tracking warmer temperatures over the next few days, followed by some rain chances at the end of the week. I'll let you know when that moves in coming up. Return to Learn with ABC 17 News this morning. Tomorrow at 6, I'm speaking live with the State Teachers Association about how educators are getting ready for the school year. Hear their concerns amid a COVID surge tomorrow morning at 6 on KMIZ. Wake up with hearties. You can have candy for breakfast. Wait, what? Because you are an adult. I sure am. New $3 French toast dips. Sweeten up your morning at Hardy's. Gonna tell you no. Feed your happy. What makes for a great vacation? Depends on who you ask. Are you looking to get away? Or bring everyone together? Do you want to get outside and play? Or see a play at the plate? Do you want to feed your soul or stuff your face? Fortunately, however you operate, I've got you covered. The name's Missouri, but you can call me Mo. And I have just one question. What's your MO? It takes a certain kind of person to change the world. My great-great-grandmother. My great-grandfather. Great-great-grandfather was, was that, that kind, kind of person. person. He looked after his community. She built an empire. He protected this nation. They lived their lives in extraordinary ways. With Ancestry, I learned the story of Peter Vodder. William Lacey. Madam C.J. Walker. They, they are, are the heroes in my family. family. Who are the heroes in yours? Wake up with Hardee's. $2 sausage biscuit, $4 breakfast platter. But wait, new $3 French toast dips make the most important meal of the day more fun. Hardee's new $3 French toast dips, the sweet one on the 2-3 more breakfast menu. Feed your appetite. If they offer me a job, I'm going to take it. The summer guest hosts continue. Hey, y'all. Sitting in for Kimmel. This is the way it is. Oh, aren't you will like it? See who's hosting tonight. Me too, I'm ready, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel Live, weeknights on ABC. Getting the job done means more than just having the right tools and equipment. It means having a team of people with experience you can trust. From residential to commercial projects, Allied Sawing has the tools and know-how to handle any project. When you need to get wall and slab sawing done and done right, you can count on Allied Sawing. So if you need a new trench for plumbing or just a new crawl space for your home, Allied Sawing has over 50 years of combined experience you can rely on. The next time you need to get the job done, call Allied Sawing and Services. It made me feel great to know that, you know, you have somebody standing behind you saying, we believe them 100% to stand with you all the way and watch it go full through the end. Injured, call Aaron Sachs and Associates. It costs you nothing to see if we can help. Before the sun's up and after it sets, ABC 17 News and Storm Track Weather keep working for you, alerting you to breaking news and tracking the latest weather patterns to help you plan ahead. We are ABC 17 News and Storm Track Weather. ABC 17 Storm Track Weather can be heard on Zimmer radio stations like Classic Rock 96.7 KCMQ. We're continuing to follow breaking news tonight. Boone County fire crews are working to put out a structure fire in Booneville. Now here's a live look on Hickory Grove School Road. We're working to get some more details about what exactly caused this fire and we'll update you as soon as our crews learn more on the scene. The Jefferson City School District will require students and staff to mask up this fall. We first told you about this as breaking news tonight at 5. ABC 17's Chanel Porter is live at Jefferson City High School. And at Chanel, masks are required inside buildings and also on buses when social distancing isn't possible. Deb, these rules will go into effect tomorrow. The Cole County Health Department recommended this plan, plus it aligns with what other schools in the area are doing. Jefferson City leaders are calling upon citizens to do their part and abide by guidelines. Cole County Health Department Director Christy Campbell said she has been working with the school district on plans for this year. When they should cancel classes, when they should get back in the classroom, you know, everything from prevention strategy. The decision made ultimately says students and staff should bring masks to school every day. Masks should be worn upon entering the building within common areas 
during passing periods in the hallways and during small group activities. Basically any time that three feet of social distancing cannot be maintained. So for example, students will be able to unmask when seated at desk three feet apart or in areas where plexiglass barriers are present. The district has also developed a rubric for tracing positive cases. If the number of positive cases within the school environment exceeds the designated percentage allowable within the school community, then an individual building may be moved to a level with additional mitigation protocols for a minimum of 10 days. This could apply to an individual classroom, grade level, school category, or the entire district. Mayor Carrie Turgeon is calling on citizens to do their part. We've, as a city, been encouraging people to uh, keep their distance and to follow all precautions. We're encouraging people to get vaccinated. I think that's very important because that does offer some protection. Tomorrow, the Jefferson City School Board will meet ahead of classes starting just one week from today. I spoke to parents on both sides, both for and against the mandate, who are looking forward to the meeting tomorrow. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Chanel Porter, ABC 17 News. Chanel, thank you. Columbia Public Schools also announced on Friday to require masks for students and staff. That measure took effect today. We're going to continue our Return to Learn coverage all week long. We're going to kick things off tomorrow morning with a live interview with a representative from the Missouri State Teachers Association. And then later this week, we're going to sit down with the superintendents of Jefferson City Schools, Southern Boone Schools, and Booneville. You can always find all of our Return to Learn coverage by going to our website. And then when you're there, just click on the News drop-down tab and select Return to Learn. Tracking some nice cool temperatures this evening as most of us are still in the upper 60s and lower 70s. It's 71 in Columbia. Jefferson City down to 70 and we're about 73 in Sedalia. Going to be a great evening as you're heading out to early tomorrow morning. Temperatures will still be in the mid to upper 60s. We'll have mainly clear skies overnight and tomorrow we're going to be warming up a little bit more. By about 10 o'clock, we're into the upper 70s by late afternoon, mid to upper 80s, but just a little bit more cloud cover. Humidity shouldn't be a huge issue tomorrow, but it'll start to creep up towards the middle of the week along with the temperatures. So the next couple days at the State Fair will be a little bit cooler versus the end of the week. We'll be getting back to about 90 degrees by Thursday. So you have the sunscreen on hand and definitely keep the umbrella around if you're going to be out and about on Friday at the fair as temperatures will be in the mid 80s and we'll have that chance for some showers and storms during the day. Most of the storms out to our west really fizzled as we lost some of that daytime heating. That'll be the trend the next several days where we see some pop up showers and storms. Here's what that looks like tomorrow. Likely by around three or four o'clock we get a little bit more of that daytime heating topping out during the day in the upper 80s. And then as we approach sunset, the storms fizzle out. Now by, by Wednesday, very similar pattern, just a couple clouds, spotty showers and storms possible by late afternoon. Then by the end of the week, tracking our next front, our next system is going to be moving in by Friday. That will bring us a good chance of rain on Friday into Friday night. Showers and thunderstorms may continue into early Saturday. It'll just depend on how far south that front gets. So it's something we'll be tracking closely. If it sticks around, we might have a little bit more rain on Saturday, but Sunday looks to clear out and we'll be warming up, getting up to about 90 by Sunday afternoon. I'm expecting anywhere from around a half an inch to an inch of rainfall with that system, but outside of that, it's going to be warm. We'll be in the upper 80s on Saturday, a little bit less of a rain chance on Sunday. We're going to see highs getting into the 90 to 91 degree range. We'll get even hotter heading into next week. I'm expecting above average temperatures over the next six to 10 days across much of the country. And I'm expecting that high temperature on Monday to get up to about 94. So enjoy tomorrow. That's going to be our coolest day of the week outside of Friday. That's when we'll have our best chance of rain. But the weekend looks warmer. We'll have a brief chance of rain, especially early on Saturday before things clear out into early next week. We'll be right back after this. This is it. This is your life, your family and your friends, your work and your play. Let us help you make the most of it all because there are plenty of dreams to build and adventures to take. And that's what we're about. Getting you the resources to enjoy life the way you want. We're not the biggest bank around, but no one will do more to get you what you need when you need it. First State Community Bank. Success starts here. Make the next chapter of your life a glamorous one at the Terrace Retirement Community. No matter if you're wanting to grab a meal with friends, stay active, or spoil yourself, there's always plenty to do at the Terrace. Did we mention the food? 
Our in-house chef rivals the best restaurants in mid-Missouri. Live an independent lifestyle that you truly love and make connections with dear friends. Live your best life at the Terrace Retirement Community in Columbia. For more information, visit TerraceRetirement.com. At Culver's, we never tire of crafting fresh frozen custard right in our restaurants. As soon as I'm like, who wants Culver's custard? The kids are already running out the door. Hello, everybody. Hi, Here's your custard. custard. Always rich and creamy, always sure to put a smile on your face. It's more than just a special treat. It's creating memories with my children and family time. Is it really good? <laughs> yeah. Family time is custard time. Welcome to Delicious. This segment of ABC 17 News is sponsored by Steve's Pest Control. Now you've got a friend in the pest control business, Steve's Pest Control. Downtown Appliance is celebrating 60 years. Our secret, happy customers. We don't have the time to go to a billion places in town. We don't have the time to call or do a bunch of research. And I know when I go to Downtown Appliance, they've already done that. And whatever we're going to buy, I don't have to wonder if it's a quality brand or not. I know that they only sell quality products. I know that it's going to be priced comparably to any place else in town. And we just trust them. And it makes it so much easier. Celebrate 60 years with Downtown Appliance Home Center, East Broadway. Unlock a summer of possibilities in a new Chevy. Expand your options and your perspective. Find new summer adventures. Find new roads. Enjoy the open road and make no monthly payments for 90 days on select popular Chevy SUVs. Plus, get interest-free financing for 72 months when you finance with GM Financial. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. This is my first time trying on glasses at home. So cute! Five different frames to Morley Parker. Oh, this one's better. Ooh. Ah. Hey. <laughs> the virtual try-on is perfect. Like, they look like they're on my face. Like, look at this. Just swipe and switch. These are definitely a keeper. I think these are the one. Ooh, these look good. That was so easy. They make it so fun and fabulous. You're watching ABC 17 News at 10 on KMIZ, where the news comes first. Welcome back. An intensifying tropical storm, Fred, is bringing some heavy rain to eastern Florida tonight. It made landfall just after 2 o'clock this afternoon. Here's a live look out of Panama City. Fred is bringing the threat of flooding, strong winds, storm surge, and even isolated tornadoes. And then a separate tropical depression hit part of the Caribbean earlier today. It comes just days after a massive 7.2 magnitude earthquake killed more than 1,300 people in Haiti. We'll have more on the search and rescue efforts there in just a minute. But first, Storm Track Chief Meteorologist Jessica Hafner has the latest track on both Storm Grace and Storm Fred. And Jess, Fred is causing the most impacts to the U.S. right now. Yeah, it continues to quickly move to the north northeast at around 12 miles per hour. Doesn't seem like it's that fast, but since this made landfall, it's already moving out of Florida, bringing some lighter rainfall to portions of northern Florida of the panhandle. This is now moving into parts of southern Alabama into southern Georgia, bringing some heavy rainfall. I'm expecting that to continue tracking north with winds up to around 40 miles per hour tonight. Anywhere from around four to six inches here in these same zones. As that continues to track north, it'll take those heavy rainfall amounts with it. You'll notice here it is now moving very quickly by tomorrow afternoon. It should be moving north of Atlanta, the remnants, and then eventually losing some steam as it moves over the Appalachian area. I'm expecting that to move into parts of Pennsylvania by early Wednesday and bring some heavy rain and some winds there. Also keeping an eye on Tropical Depression Grace. This is still just under tropical storm criteria with winds up to about 35 miles per hour. This is going to pick up a lot of strength as it moves into the warm Gulf. It'll become a tropical storm again by tomorrow, possibly making a quick landfall over the Yucatan Peninsula and continue to pick up steam as it moves closer to northern Mexico, possibly making landfall as a lower end category one hurricane. And the death toll from the devastating earthquake in Haiti is now more than 1,400. It left more than 6,000 people hurt and hundreds more are still missing. Plus, the country now braces for the possibility of more damage as tropical storm Grace comes. ABC's Matt Gutman has those details. This pancaked building behind me is what's left of a rectory, one of the main churches here in the Kai. You can see this 
tangle of steel. That is the antenna from the nearby radio station that came tumbling and twisting down. There are still search and rescue operations, but there is so much need in this country for water, for food, for axes, and for shovels. And there are still believed to be people trapped. There are many hundreds missing, in addition to the about 1,400 plus dead uh, and thousands wounded. But that tropical depression presents a significant problem. It means that those uh, U.S. Coast Guard helicopters that we saw flying the injured to Port-au-Prince and elsewhere for treatment, they're going to be grounded. It means search and rescue teams are going to have to suspend their work as that rain comes down. And for those who might have survived beneath the rubble in the past 48 hours, a night of unimaginable misery. Matt Gutman, ABC News, Lakai, Haiti. Sports is next. What's up with all the drinks? The Casey's, you buy four, get the fifth free. You know you don't have to get them all at the same time, right? I totally knew that. 